This is another episode of The Blossom Podcast, your number one source for everything bariatric surgery, from pre-op to post-op. Registered dietitian Alex Conception gives you real, raw tips and motivation through your journey. This is The Blossom Podcast. Welcome back to The Blossom Podcast. It has been a minute. But we are in a new season. It is November 1st. Can you believe it is already November? We just had Halloween. I hope your guys' Halloween was amazing. But to kick off this new season, I do have an awesome guest today. If you've been here, you may have met him. Transportation extraordinaire. The guy that makes sure that you get to where you need to get to in a very timely manner and a happy manner. We're talking to Carl Jackson. What's going on, brother? Hey, my man. Life's just taking it one day at a time. Pushing it forward. Fast, yes. Fast, you know, yes. So you work at Blossom, right? You yes. handle all of the transportation, correct? That is correct. Manage the transportation. Again, all of those who have been here... I want to say a good percentage of people have met you and you know that there's a smiley face and there is someone to talk to you and get to where you need to go. But if you don't know, Carl was also a patient at Blossom prior to working at Blossom. Is that right? That is correct. How long ago did you have surgery? It will be four years come November 9th. Wow. Four years. Time flies. Yes, it does. Feels like it was just yesterday. So to give people, or at least to paint a picture, what is your height and weight? 5'8", 185. 185. And what was your highest weight? My highest weight was 331 pounds. Damn. 331 pounds. And you're 185 right now? That is correct. So you're 146 pounds down. That is amazing. How do you feel about that? I feel blessed and very thankful. You know, I have my life back. You know, my weight no longer dictates what I get to enjoy in life. Yeah. So that's a blessing. How did we get to 300 plus pounds? Poor diet, bad exercise habits. You know, you kind of reach a point physically sometimes to where when you reach a weight and it's hard enough just doing everyday things in life, let alone, you know, trying to find a motivation to go work out because when you go to work out, there's pain, you know? Yeah. But I just finally reached that point where enough was enough, you know, and I, I needed to make a change. Tell me about your upbringing, like, and, and your weight history in that regard. Ironically, you should say that because I'm the youngest of four. I have two older brothers and a sister. Nobody in my family's ever had a weight problem except for me. Really? When yeah. did you start having a weight problem? During my teenage years, well, no, I take that back. When I was a kid, um, probably up until about junior high when I started hitting sports because then I started playing more football and, Mm -hmm. you know, wrestling and all of those things. And then, of course, you know, playing high school ball and college ball, I lost all my weight. But once I got out, I was still eating the same, but I wasn't working out like I was used to. So, What was your your, um, your athletic weight? My athletic weight, I was 220 pounds. Okay. And were you happy there? I was happier at about 205. 205 is where, is where they wanted me in college playing ball. So. Got it. Got it. And, and yeah, when, when you're dealing with college and your college metabolism and you're exercising every day, maybe two a days, right? The, the calories. And not only that, they wanted you to be at a higher weight too, Absolutely. right? That is correct. And then you take away the, the sports, but we don't stop eating that way. And we start, we start packing on the weight, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So from there, what was what was the the gradual increase in weight, and how long did it take? It was just over a course of years. At that point, I mean, you kind of because my heaviest weight before was actually even more than three thirty one. What was that? Uh, Four hundred twenty six pounds. Four hundred twenty six pounds. How old were you then? Uh, what was that? What was that? Forty two, forty three. Yeah. Oh man. And how old are you now? 53. 53. Okay, yep. so 10 years ago, you were 426 ago. pounds. That's that's mind-blowing to me. I want to see a picture. You know what? I've got one here to show you. <laughs> now, here's what's going to surprise you. I'll never forget. It was the end of December 31st of 2014. I was at my heaviest weight. 
And I remember waking up January 1st and said I had enough. So the thing that'll probably surprise you is January 1 of 2015 to November 2015, I lost 206 pounds. Oh my gosh. And, and how, did you, how did you do that? I just did it through diet restriction and exercise. I just focused on straight cardio, hit the gym two times a day, sometimes three if I was able to get it in. Yeah. Um, I really just, you know, I kept everything light. You know, I, it wasn't as healthy as a plan that I'm on now with Blossom because once I lost all my weight, I felt good physically, but I didn't look good physically. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. really didn't get the right protein balance in. You didn't really things. know 100 percent. It was just more a diet. Absolutely. That is correct. Absolutely. And so that's kind of how that, you know, when you start packing on the weight over the years, what kind of mentality did you have in terms of just lifestyle in general? And was it even a part of a part of your, I guess, daily struggle to think about your weight or it was just out of sight, out of mind? You kind of would try to ignore it, ignore it you know. Oh, people always see you this jolly, happy, lucky go guy, but they never really see the internal pain you deal with. You know, the, the small things in life, man, taking a shower, you know, going yeah. for a walk to the mailbox or just a walk in general or going into a grocery store for only one or two items, but you need a grocery cart to help support your needs. You know, it's all those aches and pains and things you do that you feel that people don't realize. And, you know, people don't understand weight loss isn't isn't easy, man. It's hard. Yeah. But you've got to be committed to it. But you don't know what you don't know at mm-hmm. the same time. You know, um, so my mentality at the time is, you know, I would try to lose, I gain, I lose, I gain. And I was like, why do I keep trying? You know, kind of that self-defeating yeah. mentality there for a while. And that's know? a lot of people's story. That's a lot of people's story right now, too, uh, especially leading up to weight loss surgery. What actually motivated you to get weight loss surgery? I had, you know, I had dealt with uh, I had dealt with a health scare uh, prior to leading up to that. Um, and, uh, and I'll share my story. Uh, when I first had relocated out here a few years ago, my wife and I went hiking out in Colorado and, um, I thought I caught was what was just a common cold. And, uh, so, you know, bought some stuff over the counter, tried to take care of it. Well, we get back, man. And it just lingered and lingered and lingered. Well, it wouldn't go away. And I'm like, man, why does this cold keep going away? I want, you know, not going away. So I go to bed at night, man. And I wasn't sleeping like I was normally either. And uh, fast forward to New Year's Eve that year in 15, my wife's like, I'm taking you to the ER. So we get to the ER and uh, they do a test on my heart, man. And Mm -hmm. doctor comes back and he's like, I don't know what you have to do, whether we send you by ambulance or your wife drives you, but you need to get to the hospital ASAP. I was in congestive heart failure. We both were just blown away, man, because when I relocated here, man, I was 185 pounds. Yeah. But I had put on a lot of fluid or changed something. We didn't know what was going on. So there I was in cardiac ICU for about six weeks. And uh, they couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, um, the only thing they wanted to come and tell me is, you know, you might have to get a pacemaker and this and that. But I'm like, but what happened? I was just fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah. I had a physical before we even left town. Still no answers. Um, so anyway, they put me on meds. I had to go in twice a week for a cardiac class. I still wouldn't let him do the defibrillator because I was like, something's just not right. At least until I have an answer, right? Yeah. Well, found myself that March uh, back in the hospital again, but this time I was at St. Rose Dominican. When I tell you God's good, man, he is because there I was in ER again, but the ER doctor that came in at that particular time had seen this type of thing before. So there I was, man, stuck in the hospital again for a few days and they were waiting to do... uh, to go into my heart again, you yeah. know, to check it out. And, and uh, he was expecting to find, you know, some arterial damage, cholesterol, all that type of stuff. And I said, you're not going to find anything. He goes, really? I said, yeah. He goes, okay, prove me wrong. Well, sure enough, they did my test and came back negative. So he was baffled. Well, fast forward again, this particular ER doctor had a friend who was a primary care physician who then also had a friend who was a cardiologist here in Nevada. So all three of them worked together to try to figure out what was going on with me. Some of my reaction was due to the medication that they were giving me, but it still wasn't good enough. So, uh, you know, my cardiologist kept doing random testing and uh, he was baffled. Uh, they just still couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, mind you, we're getting ready to get married leading up to all of this, right? Okay. And a month before our marriage, the doctor said, Carl, we're going to do one more test. He goes, but if this test comes back the same, because my heart ejection fracture rate was only at 20%. Now. Oh, wow. And he said, we're going to have to talk turkey. I said, look, 
I will do whatever we got to do. Just give me the test one more time. I said, it's been a little bit better since. While you're preparing for a wedding. While I'm preparing for a wedding. So I didn't even know if I was going to even be around to be able to marry my wife, man. Oh, my gosh. And uh, then my heart ejection fracture rate was up to 22%. But the crazy thing about this, Alex, is I was still able to go walk and go to the gym. You didn't feel limited. I didn't feel limited. Except by my weight, right? Yeah. So, um, what'd they find? Well, here's what here's what they ended up finding. It's rare, but when I was in Colorado hiking, you know, how most viral infections attack your lungs. Mine skipped my lungs and went to my heart. Oh wow! That's so you I actually had. you actually caught something? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a rare case, but it happened. But now you ready for the miraculous part? I had to go back in for my final results leading up to wedding, right? There's my ER doctor, they're my primary care physician, and cardiologist. Dude, they're standing there in tears, and I'm like, oh, this isn't good. My heart made a full recovery, man. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, I, God is good. Yeah, because right before that last test, he told me, I don't want to get your hopes up, but 33% remain the same, 33% get worse, and 33% remain, or you don't get better. But they forgot about that 1%, man. Wow. So what was your weight during that time? That's where I hit 331. So in that time period, you started gaining weight? I started gaining rapidly. And that's even after they told you? So walk me through that mentally. Was it just, I'm, I feel like I might not make it, therefore I'm going to enjoy as much food as I, I want? Or just... I found comfort in it. I found mm-hmm. comfort in food. Because I didn't know if I was going to live to see another day. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a matter of eating with the mentality of, well, I'm going to do whatever I want. But it, it gave me comfort, solace, and peace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that, that was what was for me, you know. Because I was like, well, I can't go do all the other things I want to do now, so I might as well eat, you know. Yeah. Um, but then I did follow up with the cardiologist and my primary care physician to ask them about this surgery. And they wanted to know all about it, so I educated them on it as well. And, uh, of course, you know, Dr. Pell, who did my procedure here, couldn't do it yet until they signed off on the approval. Uh, and they did. So how did you know about the surgery? I, my wife ended up having the surgery as well. Yeah, she had it before she you? She had it the year before I did. Okay, she had it in yeah, December of 2017. Yeah. I had it in November 2018. Yeah, so your wife had surgery here as well. I didn't, I didn't realize if, if uh, you had it first or, or she had no, it first. she had it first, and I went through the process with her and, uh, you know, far as a companion and being there, and that's how we learned about Blossom because she needed help. You know, she was battling some thyroid and hormonal issues, and... And uh, she just came to me saying she needed help one day. And so we kept looking around at different places throughout the country. And Blossom just kept coming back to us every time, every time. So that's when we set up that initial consultation. And Nick was actually her coordinator. Nick would actually end up being my coordinator. Nice, and, nice. Uh, but just proud of her as well, man. She lost all 190 pounds. That's amazing. You know, and kept it off. So. And her, her health right now is, is fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely. So she had thyroid issues. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that. I don't really know a whole lot about thyroids um, mm-hmm. themselves. I just know between that and some hormonal issues, man. She was, the reason she was, I ask is because a lot of patients here actually have almost almost like a cop out, you know, to where it's like, oh yeah, I don't, I have thyroid issues. It's not gonna do to see what happens, you know. How does it affect my thyroid? And it's does it get worse or I'm probably going to be the person that doesn't lose weight at all because I have thyroid issues, you know? So that's, that's where I'm, I'm going with that. Oh, okay. She has thyroid issues, but she was still able to uh, reach where she wanted to and live a happy, healthy life. Absolutely. Because she was determined and she knew she, you know, she knew what this procedure was about and it was a tool, you know, she understood that you still got to put the work in afterwards. Yeah, you, know, you only get out of it what you put into it, you know. And her thyroid is great now, just so by the way. Yeah. Um, but she didn't let that deter her because one of the neat things that we loved here at Blossom is it didn't only teach us how to lose the weight; it taught us how to keep it off. Yes. And that's that was the biggest thing. And just to just to clarify too, not that this can cure any type of thyroid issues. It's uh, if you are still keeping a relationship with your with your primary care or you know endocrinologist things like that to taking the medications this just makes it makes your thyroid more efficient when you get your health under control Absolutely. you know uh through nutrition lifestyle and getting the weight under control as well so it's not that you can't lose weight it's just that it's not as efficient you know and of course you have to take certain measures and yes this is just a tool it's not an absolute solution it helps you adopt the lifestyle that 
that you should be following. Absolutely. So what medications were you on in terms of, or was it just heart medication? Did you have any weight loss medication? When I was at my heaviest before, I used to be on metformin. Okay. Uh, because I became a diabetic. But then I lost yeah. the 206 pounds of my own and came off of that. Um, but at the time, they had me on, I forgot what the different heart medications okay. were at the time. I can't, I can't rattle them off. I want to say HCTZ for diuretic, um, lisinopril. There was another one at the time that I had to take. But, you know, the best thing is, man, once I hit my goal, I was off all my medications, man. Nice. Doctors that are totally is, blown away. That's one of the biggest victories as well. Because if you've met with me and you know you've you've uh, had your either your your pre op consultation or post op consultation, I would ask you, and this is just a reflective question to plant the seed: is what does success look like to you? And a lot of people, and the reason why I ask that is because a lot of people tie success to a number, and it's not sustainable long term. What do you gain by being that number is, is the reason and the Absolutely. more sustainable foundation question that I want you to reflect on. And it would be not just losing the weight, but getting off medication, saving a ton of money in that regard. You are not at risk for chronic illness related to weight, you know, and gaining the confidence, doing the activities that you know that you love doing. Absolutely. And not only that, we... You may not have been limited physically to doing a lot of uh, the activities you want to do, but we limit ourselves absolutely because we're mentally not there, and we think that either we're going to embarrass ourselves, or I'm not going to make it, you know, or I'm, uh, you know, you guys just go ahead, kind of scenario. Yes, Live right, there and done that, man. Absolutely, <laughs> it's like no, absolutely. no, that's all right. You guys go ahead, but that's where we limit ourselves, even though you know you are physically not limited and you're capable of doing it. But that's where the confidence you know, comes after this as well. So that's, that's awesome. And, and, uh, what was your, what was your wife's highest weight? If you, if you recall, oh, you don't have to answer that. She lost 190 pounds. Yeah, I care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she lost 190 pounds. We don't even want to I want to say it was like 358 or something like that. That's, don't that's me, awesome. <laughs> um, so what is, what's your secret right now? Four years, you kept the weight off. Are you actually at your goal weight? Right now I'm probably about eight, seven, eight pounds off. Okay, but yeah, that's and right. that's good, that. you know? That's okay. And that's, that's what we need to understand moving forward, too, is because once you reach that number that you were looking for, it is, it's not over, right? right? And you're going to be up and down within that, and it's your job to maintain. And seven pounds is not a far, well, let's just say seven, eight pounds is a far cry from 400 pounds. Amen. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So that, that's, that's awesome. And what do you do right now to maintain? Go to the gym. I do. Uh, I do an aqua boot camp class. I do body pump. Uh, believe it or not, my hardest class is yoga. Man, <laughs> kicks my tail every day. Yeah, but and <laughs> um, but I do a lot of. I do strength training now as well. I started incorporating strength training back. But one of my favorite things is a stationary rowing machine. So anybody, who yeah, knows me, I, I live on that thing. I, I love the rowing machine. I can do that all day. I need to get one and buy it, take it home myself. But yeah, uh, but we go hiking. We go biking. Uh, one of the biggest things I wanted to share with you, Alex, in terms of giving me and our life back. I was eight months out uh, from my procedure, and we registered for the 12K across the bay in San Francisco. Wow. So we ran up the hill. At, we didn't walk it. We ran it. Ran it from the, up the hill at Sausalito across Golden Gate and finished at Giardelli Square. That is fantastic. You know, and we've got to do that. You know, we've gone hiking up to the top of the Delicate Arch in Moab, gone to Zion and gone hiking. It's given us our life back. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, and I always tell people, you know, it, it, those are big things that I share. Amongst other things we've done, but you know what means the most to me? Just being able to get up every day, put on a pair of clothes, know they're going to fit. Yeah. I sit in an airplane seat and I don't have to worry about squishing. And That's a big one. My seat belt and I can put the tray table down and sit there and relax and put my yeah. head down. Yeah. It. It's the little things, you know, because people don't realize for every pound you lose, four pounds of pressure off your knees. And I'm going to tell you, I'm thankful for every step I take every day because I remember what that used to feel like. I love that. So, I love that. And you're not going back. Amen. I you're not no going back. So what are some of the goals, uh, the future goals in terms of um, activities or grand, grand things that you have in plan? I know COVID kind of really messed up a lot of people's plans. Right. We essentially lost a year, you know. <laughs> COVID was crazy on all. It was, yeah, COVID was just a really, really weird time. But, you know, future goals, you know, I want to get involved more into uh, biking a lot more. 
Uh, you know, we're starting to get some friends involved in more 5Ks and 10Ks, you know, things of that nature. But one of the things I'm really kind of focusing on myself, and of course, I'm going to be hitting you up for some advice. Yeah. But uh, with your professional expertise and knowledge, uh, but I want to really get back into strength training and kind of yeah get that older men's group for a body comp, you know, body competition. Oh, I you love know? that. So that's awesome. That's I've, I've taken some patients from from uh, from the clinic to the stage. Okay. You know, and yeah, it's possible. And you're four years out. You maintain your body looks great. You know, we just need to, and you have a great foundation. I mean, you you play ball in college. You're still active. You do the five k, twelve k. Yes. 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 And. Man, there's there's a uh, sky's the limit, man. Sky's the limit, that's and you'll be able to participate, and that's the goal, right? Yes. We want to participate. We want to gain yeah, life absolutely. and yeah. enjoy, create the memories, you know, and take those pictures, things like that. That's that's awesome. What was your biggest struggle from surgery? Just figuring out your new normal, because your relationship with food changes. Mm -hmm. It's in a more positive and healthy manner now, but you have to develop those consistent habits. Um, you know, and there's going to be days, you know, where, you know, crushed it early on, mm -hmm. you know, but there's days too where you got to accept, hey, I'm not human. I kind of fell out the wagon here a little bit these few days. Yeah, we're human. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up over it. Get back. But I think the biggest struggle is just figuring out your new normal. Um, but it was really important that you log all of your food, mm -hmm. good, bad, or indifferent, put it all in there. Because then if I ever had an issue or something wasn't working, can reach out and say, hey, Alex, I'm struggling here a little bit. What, am, what do I need to modify? Yeah. What am I doing wrong? Not only that, we, I feel like everybody actually knows, you know, after a certain level of time, it's the accountability, mm -hmm. you know, and Absolutely. we are our worst enemies. Absolutely. And we will omit things and we'll forget about things, conveniently forget about things. Yes, absolutely. Right? And <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I did actually eat that. And holy crap, that was a lot of calories. You know, but I'll I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll go to the gym extra hard, but no, you already, you know, like it's not even about that. It's just about not making up for what you did, but just getting back on track. Absolutely. Is what I try to preach in that regard it's like don't try to make up for what you did yesterday just get back on track the body will progress the way that you want it to absolutely yes it will most definitely you and know. you can still enjoy yourself mm -hmm. right absolutely. so you were you were 100 percent on the on the protocol in the first six months yeah oh for the first uh, yeah i stuck with it all the way up to my goal man didn't deviate at all fantastic no line, no nothing you know yeah um but the thing i think that was the biggest challenge is you know, even like Dr. Pell always told me before, you know, and it's something I always like to share with patients. You have to diet to lose and exercise to maintain. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing is to make sure you're exercising consistently yeah. to maintain it. And what do, you, what do you do now on a regular basis in terms of, I know that we have our, our days, it's, it's starting to get cold out, you know, and you want to stay cuddled up in the, in the blanket a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, like what, what's, your, what's your must do's? In terms of activity. First thing I wake up in the morning, I have to go to the gym. My day is not complete unless, because I'm a morning person to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that's where my highest energy peak is. And once I do that, it carries me through the rest of my day. Because once I go to the gym, I know for one, I need to be there because my body needs it. But not only that, my body feels better throughout the day because of it. And as a result, it keeps me on track as well. Yeah. On the days where I don't make it into the gym like I want to. I find myself kind of going a little bit more relaxed on my meals sometimes. That's why it's important for me to stay focused. Yeah, day, set the set tone. Time. Absolutely. I, I actually follow a very similar philosophy. And, and um, the reason why I say, you know, it's getting called out because I'm a victim of it. You know, right. I'm, I'm human. We're all human. And you're just, you know, I'm just going to snooze that. You know, right. I'm just going to snooze that alarm. Oh, man, maybe we'll... We'll just go afterward, you know, and, and one of those. But what does stay true and stay consistent is setting that tone, even doing 10 minutes in Absolutely. the morning, doing some air squats, doing some push-ups, just getting that blood flow and mentally preparing yourself for the day because it's going to stay positive after that. You know, you start skipping that. You don't have to go to the gym for that. You, like I said, 10 minutes will set the tone right. and you'll be able to even if you skip the gym afterwards, you already set the tone for the day, but most likely you're going to go and, and, uh, and finish off what you started. And Absolutely. that's going to be hitting the gym afterwards. And um, what, is your, what does your typical day look like in terms of food? In terms of food, and I, I, I mix it up. I have a lot of different varieties so I don't get bored or become stagnant eating the same thing. 
Um, just like, for example, this morning I had uh, I had a slice of the oral wheat. This isn't a plug for oral wheat at all. It's mm-hmm. just the brand that I use. But I had one slice of their keto bread. Okay. I had that. I had a slice of, I had one of the uh, turkey sausage patties from Walmart. And then I fixed myself an egg. Okay. And I kind of just made an egg breakfast sandwich. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, my morning snack today, I have a bag of Quest Tortilla style protein chips. Mm-hmm. Uh, for lunch, I have myself, I have what, five and a half ounces of boneless skinless chicken thigh with a cup of sauteed zucchini, onions, and mushrooms. Perfect. This afternoon, I have, Costco has these Green Ridge Farm beef sticks that are really good. So I'm having that and a baby bell. And then tonight, I'm probably just going to have some salmon for dinner with some asparagus. I love it. So that's kind of how my meals look like yeah. throughout the day. So. And you you know what works for you right now. I mean, you're four years out, Absolutely. you know, and this is where I say if you are struggling, always just lead with the protein and veggies and the mm-hmm. sleep will take care of the rest. You don't have to overthink it once you lead with the protein and veggies, you know, but uh, like like how you're doing right now with the oral wheat bread and things like that, it's that's perfectly fine. That's one thing that I want to get across is that I don't like to demonize any food. Right. You know, it's just that it took a certain relationship with food to get here. Absolutely. And in that first six months, first year, we are trying to disrupt that relationship with food, create a foundation for long-term success, and of course, maximize the potential of the sleep in the time period that's most valuable, which is that first six to 12 months. Right. You know, otherwise, yes, you will lose weight even if you didn't make any changes right. because you are physically restricted. Mm-hmm. Even if you ate pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you will still lose weight, but you will also gain that weight back. Yes. And then you're going to be in a, a place mentally to where you're exactly where you were in the Absolutely. beginning. It didn't work, Absolutely. right? I tried everything. It's like, no, you didn't. you know. And those who have come back, who have lost 100, gained 100, saying that I need... I need something else. This doesn't work. I can eat whatever I want. I would ask. I've said this story a million times. If I, if you, if I were to give you a hamburger right now, how much of that burger would you be able to eat in the, in in one sitting? I want to say ninety nine percent of the time, those individuals would say about half. You know, so that tells me and tells you that you are still physically restricted. Right. You just have been eating very poorly. Mm-hmm. You know, because another analogy used a million times. Six ounces of protein and veggies versus six ounces of chocolate cake to, you know, the <laughs> same exact volume, but the the caloric density is completely different, Absolutely. you know, and you will be able to tolerate both. So yeah. that's where you, this is where it is very difficult to stretch out your stomach, but very easy to eat more calories than you're burning. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And you hit it on the point, you know, because you were asking about one of the biggest struggles too, and I think what I can share there is that grazing, which I'm sure you've talked to people yes. about. Don't, when you find that boredom and stretch of time, stop grazing, man, because you're blowing your calorie, you know, your caloric intake through the roof. Or and you can make other choices. That. Make some other choices. Absolutely. Eat some celery, eat some cucumber. You yes. know, you're going to still fill up that, you're still going to get that satiated feeling. Mm-hmm. Like you're eating something, you, you, you know, you get that oral fixation, you want to just put something in your mouth, something like that. You don't have to make it very calorically dense. Yeah, absolutely. It could be very nutritious. And that's why I like to use the, like the pickles, the celery, the cucumber, because it gives you that crunch. Absolutely. And that crunch kind of uh, triggers something in your brain that's going to be, oh, I'm, I'm snacking on, right. on something, you know, and I'm good. It'll hold me over. Or just get busy because a lot of times it's, we're, we're just bored. Yes, exactly. We're just bored. And how many times you open the refrigerator and close the refrigerator, grab nothing or grab something yes. just for what? Because you're bored. Boring. Yep. You know, fill it with activities. That's what we do. Fill it with activities. Take the dog for a walk. I'll, I'll go back to the gym if I have to. Yeah. I'll go do something, even if it's just to go out in the garage. You know, some, wash the car that's already been washed. I don't care. It's there something you so you're not sitting there doing that stuff while yeah, you're Yeah, just elevate. Yeah, absolutely. Just elevate. Learn learn how to play the guitar or the piano or a language absolutely. or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I have a um, funny story because I, I um, my Mondays have, have opened up. You know, my wife's working. She okay. would somehow always catch me doing something stupid, right. you know. And she, she FaceTimed me on her lunch break. She's like, what are you? It's like, are you in the, are you in the garage? What are you doing? You know, I'm like, oh, well, I'm practicing picking this lock. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this was literally last week. You know, she's like, I'm practicing picking this lock. And, and she's like, oh, it sounds like a, a really productive morning there for you. You know, I was like, <laughs> another time, too, because I got like a split machine. She, she caught me on the camera. She actually just sent me a screenshot of it, of myself. She's like, 
what are you doing? You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to work on these splits. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's just funny. something just just because you you know your brain goes somewhere and you want to stay active. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's Absolutely. just how how goofy I am. But not a lot of people know about that. So hey, that well, I appreciate you sharing that. That's funny. Yeah. Man. Um. So what's the what's the ultimate goal? My ultimate goal. That's a good question. My ultimate goal, honestly, man, is to just. You're going to have to think about that one. Well, you know, honestly, here's my ultimate goal, man. You know, because, you know, you always want to figure out what your legacy in life is going to be. And obviously, I want to maintain a healthy and active lifestyle the rest of my life. Um, Try to keep traveling and just living and enjoying all the things while I can so I can reminisce about those days when I physically can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, But my ultimate goal, man, is just to keep improving as an individual and all the energy that I put into myself health wise and everything make sure I'm putting even more energy into my character man there you because go. it doesn't matter what else you do in life man people are gonna remember you for your character exactly and that's why we get a lot of positive reviews just with people's experience with you you know and um, on that now how, how did you get involved with Blossom after after surgery well it's kind of funny really it was just going through Instagram one day and saw an opening and was like ah never thought about that yeah you know I was like I was only four months out I literally started with the company four months after the procedure. Didn't wow. see it coming. But it was a blessing, you know. Um, fantastic company, wonderful team. It's nice being a part of something positive in people's lives every day. Yeah. Not many people get to do that. You know, where they say you truly find a job, you don't have to worry about working another day in your life. A lot of people truly don't get to experience that. And we're all in that position. You know, a lot of patients, you know, often tell me, you know, that you know, they, they appreciate my energy and, um, I, I even have one of them give me a nickname. They call me the hype man of surgery. Yeah, uh, there you go. Because I've been able to be there not only as a companion, but a patient myself. And now I'm an employee with the company. But honestly, you know, man, it's just one of those things where, and I'm sorry, I even just drew a blank on your actual. Yeah, no, I said through. like how, how you came involved with, with Blossom. Oh, yeah. And that's what I wanted to share. You know, for as much as the patients tell me that I give them, I got to be honest with you, Alex. It's what they give me in return, man. Yeah. It's tenfold. I mean, they keep me motivated. They keep me excited. They keep me wanting to do the things I want to do. Even on those days, because I'm human. I struggle sometimes mentally where I'm like, I'm not feeling this today. Of course. But then I meet these patients, man, and they're just, you know. Yeah, they're, you, you see yourself in them in the beginning, absolutely. right? How you were four years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's huge. That's huge. And I love I love hearing about that. And I... I do put a lot of value into Blossom and, and our culture over here because I don't know of any other company that has the morale like that that we do over Absolutely. here. And everybody that works here looks like they really, truly <laughs> have fun and enjoy working here. And, and I really appreciate that a lot from the, from the top down. And that's awesome to hear. I mean, just to you know, piggyback on that, it is I always tell the patients. There's a blossom. There's the bariatric experience out there, but then there's the blossom bariatric experience. Yes. And they realize that at the end, once it's all done and said. Yeah, we so. we, we definitely pride ourselves in in trying to making making sure that the patients have a a great a great experience rather than just you know surgery. Absolutely. You know, and yeah, even absolutely. the the follow ups and things like that too, and the community, and not only that, seeing and hearing the success stories, just like yourself just like your wife, and being able to share that with the people. And that's why you're on here right now, too. Oh, it's my honor, man. Thank you. If you were to give three tips to, uh, to a patient, what would they be in terms of wanting to go through surgery and thinking about your experience? Three tips. Or let's just say one to three. Trust the process. It works. Yes. It just does. You get out of it what you put into it. It's just a tool, like we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. The real work begins afterwards. Yes. And it's a true lifestyle change. The other thing is that I'd really like to live people with, because honestly, Alex, I'm going to be real with you, man. The hardest thing about this whole journey is self-love, man. So many people are so used to giving so much of themselves to others, they don't know how to give it back to themselves. And this process really teaches you how to do that. But it's still hard, because even when you lose all of that weight, now you start finding different flaws about yourself. Mm-hmm. So I always tell people, self-love. Remember to practice self-love. All that love you pour into everyone else, make sure you pour it back into yourself. 
I love that. I say the same thing, but slightly in a different way. And it's celebrate the victories. Yes. Celebrate the victories. Don't focus on the frustrations. Absolutely. Right? Because that kind of just brings me back to, to something I, I read not that long ago in terms of we're biologically wired to look at the frustrations and the fear. And, and that is because if you go back to early man, right. right, when we didn't have all of the technology, we didn't have all of, all of the uh, everything that we have right now, we had hunter-gatherer. The first thing you do is try to assess the danger, right? Yes. So that's the first thing is assessing the problems, assessing the problems. What's that sound? Right. That might be an animal behind the tree, but that's how we are wired. We are wired that way to focus on all of the negativity and be in defense rather right. than celebrating those victories. But um, just something I read, I, it, it kind of carried, carried yeah. over when you when you brought that up. But we can still switch that and we can still flip it just as you have. And just as we're talking about it right now, is that as long as you're aware of it, it'll be easier to work on. Right. You know, and that's where I say celebrate the victories. Absolutely. Right. Self love and eliminate that negative self talk absolutely you know absolutely well that's awesome well yeah we've been talking for a little bit now it was it was really well actually you still you gotta get back to work too. We're, <laughs> we're actually all on the clock right now so it was a pleasure <clears throat> speaking with you thank you for sharing your story i honestly did not know that what your story was and i didn't know that you were 400 plus pounds and man and, and yeah, you're going to have to show me that picture as well. Absolutely. And Alex, I know one thing that we didn't touch on that I wanted to make sure we talked about is, and I know you mentioned to people about stalls because everybody gets hung up on stalls. Yes. And I make sure and tell everyone, hey, stalls are going to happen. But trust the process. Keep doing what you're doing because even though the scale might not be moving, you're going to notice your clothes are still getting bigger. Your inches yes. are coming off. Things yes. Of nature. And don't compare your weight loss to anybody else. That's a big one. That's and huge. we talk We talk about that. We talk about it on the podcast a couple of episodes. With that comparison, with the with the stalls, we want, and I even tell people, you know, we lose perspective of time after surgery because we want results now. But you have to understand, what what were you just telling me earlier? Rome wasn't built in a day. Absolutely, that's, that's what you that's that what you tell people too. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Well, oh, here's yeah, that yeah, photo. Show, let's let's see that. Let's here. see that photo. Pull it up here. Oh, come on, you gotta love these apps sometimes, man. Yeah. Here it is. No, it's okay. I'll have to show it to you afterwards. Yeah, we'll you'll, you'll show it to me. No, no worries. No worries. And we'll, so sorry we'll post that, it up man. or something. <laughs> well, we'll have to have your wife on here too. Um, I'd love to hear her story and uh, her perspective on things as well and how, how you, you guys have um, been able to manage surgery as a couple afterwards because it was uh there's there's a lot of there's a lot of couples that actually go through this as well absolutely and one of the biggest things that i tell them is you can't compare in that regard as well there's not a competition there's you got to have support you know because we're talking about two different anatomies mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely well here's the that was me at my heaviest at 426 pounds and that oh, was me at my first hundred wow. pounds down Okay. Wow. So I'm going to show you, you the look last like one here. a completely different person. And I'll show you the last one when I hit my goal right here. And Alex, I'm going to be honest with you. This photo I'm going to show you, I actually got down to 163 pounds. Wow, you you even look like you you uh, you got younger. Well, you know, it looks like you, it looks like I don't you know got about younger. All that, but... <laughs> no, it's true. So you gained 10 years. But here it is, right here. This is where I felt like I got too thin. But remember, I told you. I did it through just diet wow. and exercise with caloric restriction. Blossoms taught me how to be able to eat in a manner where I look much healthier now. Yeah. Versus when I did at that point. No, but still, you, you so, even look healthy there too. Thank you. All right, my friend. Well, once again, thank you for coming on. It was awesome talking to you, and we'll have to we'll Pleasure have to get you uh, get your wife over here too, and we'll have another conversation. Sounds fantastic, uh, and it was my honor, man. And thank you so much, Alex. For of having course. Me. So, if you guys, if if you haven't booked surgery, give us a call seven zero two four six three 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 zero zero blossom dot com, and you'll meet with me. You'll meet with Carl, and you'll get to hear some stories. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next. Peace. This was another episode of The Blossom Podcast. For more motivation and future episodes with Alex, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any life-changing moments.